Hi everyone, it's Joanna here. The month of Ramadan is approaching and fasting in the month of Ramadan is an excellent opportunity to make significant lifestyle changes. For the Muslim, it also teaches you to manage and practice spirituality which include not eating excessively. I'm not a Muslim, however, I have practiced fasting for several days and it can be challenging especially when you have to fast for more than 17 hours in a day. What I'll be sharing with you in this video is a Ramadan healthy meal guide. Good food to nourish your body, portion sizes and food to avoid which may defeat the purpose of fasting. During the fasting month, your metabolism will slow down due to the long hours without food and drinks. To keep a balance, your diet should have less than the normal amount of food, yet enough to keep you healthy and active. In general, your diet should be simple and does not differ much from your everyday diet. For those of you who are planning on losing some weight, this month is the perfect time to make healthier food choices and to learn about portion control. So let's start with iftar, the food eaten immediately after sunset to break fast. During this time, you want to replenish your body with fluid and a quick burst of energy. So choose one or two from these three types of food. First, fruits or dried fruits, such as dates, prunes or raisins. Fruits contain high amounts of natural sugar for a quick energy boost. Go for one small handful of dried fruits or one piece of fruit. Second, 100% natural fruit juices or smoothies without any added sugar. You may choose to sweeten it with a little bit of natural sweeteners such as honey. Fruit juices contain both natural sugar and fluid to keep your body hydrated. Go for one cup. Third, milk, which also contain natural sugar and water to replenish the body. Again, go for one cup. Your meal should be a small snack, just enough to bring low blood sugar levels to normal levels. Then I believe the Muslim will conduct your Maghrib prayer before having dinner. For dinner, this meal shouldn't differ much from your regular dinner. Have a balanced meal consisting of complex carbs, protein, vegetables, dairy and healthy fat. So let's start with complex carbs. Complex carbs are food that will help release energy slowly, hence providing your body with enough energy throughout the day. Healthy examples include basmati rice, chapati, barley, oats, whole grain bread, lentils, couscous, potatoes and more. For a female, aim to have two servings of complex carbs. For a meal, you can have three or four servings depending on your size. This one small bowl is two servings of complex carbs. Please do watch my how much should I eat to lose weight video to learn more about portion sizes in detail. Next, protein. Because it takes much longer for protein to break down in our body, having protein will keep you satisfied for much longer and to keep cravings under control. If you intend to do a short workout session before dinner, then having protein in your meal will also help with muscle recovery. Healthy examples include baked or grilled chicken such as tandoori, lamb, beef, eggs, chickpeas, any type of beans, fish, seafood, tofu, tempeh and more. One serving of protein is one ounce. For female, aim to have two or three servings. For male, add one or two additional servings. Third group, vegetables. Vegetables are extremely low in calories, high in fiber, hence they will keep you satisfied and it is hard to overeat them. If you intend to watch your weight during this fasting month, then pack your plate filled with vegetables. Healthy examples include green leafy vegetables, onions, olives, cucumbers, carrots, cauliflower and more. One serving of vegetable is about 80 gram. Aim to have at least two to three servings of vegetable on your dinner plate or have as much vegetables as you want. Next, dairy. Nowadays, there are a lot of controversial in regards to the pros and cons of dairy products. Some of you might not consume dairy as part of your meal or you may be lactose intolerant. Whatever your stand is on dairy products, consume them in moderation. So if you intend to add them as part of your meal, go for one serving. Healthy examples include one glass of milk or buttermilk, one small pot of yogurt or cottage cheese, or one slice of cheese. This can be consumed separately or it may be added as part of your cooking. And the final group is healthy fat. Examples of healthy fat include one teaspoon or one tablespoon of olive oil, a small handful of nuts or seeds, 
fish such as salmon which is high in omega-3 fatty acid and avocado. Healthy fats are usually added as part of your cooking. For instance, lightly stir fried with 1 teaspoon of olive oil instead of using butter or ghee. Make hummus or sprinkle your salad with a little bit of olive oil, nuts or seeds. Healthy fat is good for you, however, they are still fat and they are very high in calories, so consume them in small amount. Now that you know what should be on your dinner plate, your preparation method is key to either make a meal healthy or unhealthy. So choose to prep your meal by grilling, boiling, steaming or baking instead of deep frying which will destroy most of the nutrients. Here's an example of what a healthy dinner can be. Complex cups, one small bowl of rice. Protein, 3 ounces of chicken breast steamed with herbs and spices. Vegetable, dairy and healthy fat. 3 servings of mild vegetable curry, in which I've used 1 teaspoon of olive oil and 1 cup of yogurt. Remember that your dinner should remain a dinner, not a feast. After dinner, allow time for your body to digest and register the feeling of fullness. Remember that it takes at least 20 minutes for your body and mind to know that you are full. So do not rush and finish your dinner in 15 minutes. Instead, pace yourself out and take your time to really enjoy the food that you have been blessed with. So 30 minutes after dinner or before bedtime, consume 1 to 2 servings of fruits to facilitate digestion and to prevent any indigestion issues. You may choose to have a fruit on its own or make a yoga parfait with fruits, nuts or seeds. If you still feel slightly hungry late at night, choose small healthy snacks to keep hunger at bay without feeling too overly full. Please watch my 10 healthy late night snacks or under 100 calorie snack ideas for recipes. As for Suho, your pre-dawn meal, aim to consume a wholesome, moderate meal, high in fiber, complex carbs and protein which are filling and will provide you with enough energy for many hours. Here are my 10 slow digesting recipes which are light but will provide you with enough energy and keep you healthy. Peanut butter toast with banana slices, egg on toast, egg muffins, fruit smoothies, green smoothies, yogurt parfait, chicken soba soup noodles, chunky veggie barley soup, peanut butter oatmeal, and overnight oats. These are all very quick and simple recipes which can be prepped under 15 minutes or less. Some of them can even be made the day before. All these recipes are available under my Ramadan playlist which you can click here. The serving size should be approximately half of your dinner size. So for instance, you can have one solid meal such as peanut butter toast with banana slices and one liquid meal such as green smoothie. This combination will provide you with enough energy for many hours. Avoid overeating or consuming heavy meals for suhor as it can make you feel lethargic and sluggish right from the start of the day and we do not want that. Just like your regular healthy daily meals, the food you want to avoid include fast food and heavily processed food such as burger, chips, deep fried samosas or fried chicken. Second, food high in refined carbs such as white bread or white flour which may leave you feeling hungry again very quickly. Third, too much fatty and high sugar food such as oily curries, anything deep fried, cakes, biscuits, pastries, chocolates, traditional sweets and more. You might want to avoid spicy food as it can cause indigestion, bloating and discomfort to the stomach and avoid or reduce on your caffeine intake such as coffee, tea or coke because they contain diuretic properties which can stimulate quicker water loss through urination. If you're someone who drinks caffeine on a regular basis, reducing caffeine drastically can cause headache, irritability and mood swings. So reduce your caffeine gradually 3 to 5 days before Ramadan. Yes, there may be occasions where you crave for your favorite naughty food or days where you are invited to feast with your families and friends. There is nothing wrong with treating yourself as long as you practice mindful eating. Fasting in the month of Ramadan is an excellent opportunity to make significant lifestyle changes such as understanding your relationship with food, listening to your body when you eat, learning self-control and most importantly to appreciate the food you have been blessed with. To conclude, aim to drink lots of water between iftar and suhoor to avoid dehydration. Aim to eat real food, food in its purest form. 
eat food that will keep your body hydrated, eat lots of vegetables and fruits, and remember that your meals should not differ much from your regular healthy meals. And Ramadan should not be an excuse for you to stop exercising. In fact, you should continue with your regular exercises and keep them between 30 to 45 minutes with slightly lower intensity. The best time to work out is after your evening prayer, before dinner, or before Suhoor. So let this month of Ramadan be the start to a healthier you by creating positive eating habits with a heightened level of consciousness and spirituality. Lots of love and happy Ramadan! For new fitness, food and motivational videos, please like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel and website. Do follow me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter to stay connected with me. Thanks guys!